He has a very special man cave. There's arguably something off about anyone who has a man cave, but it's especially weird when it's a robotic egg in the middle of an otherwise empty room on a spaceship. What's wrong with just having a couch and some black light posters? Is the egg Vader's private pouting chamber? Does it serve a function beyond increasing the drama of any given interaction? He embarrasses Boba Fett in front of his friends. In The Empire Strikes Back, Vader gathers a group of bounty hunters together to hunt down Han and Leia. He specifically tells Boba Fett no disintegrations. That's all fine, but couldn't he have done that via hologram? Why embarrass one of the best bounty hunters in the universe? More to the point, couldn't Vader have sent hologram messages to all of the bounty hunters? How much time did he waste by making them all come to his ship? He throws his lightsaber. At the end of Return of the Jedi, Vader has a final face-off with Luke. It's tense at first, but then Vader pulls a move straight out of the early 90s WWF handbook and throws his lightsaber at Luke. This is a character whom the audience has seen choke people out with his mind. But what does he do when he's facing the most powerful Jedi in the universe tosses his weapon? He turns Han into tacky wall art. There's nothing worse than bad art. And how else could you describe the Han Carbonite statue? Not only does Vader turn our favorite scoundrel into a Pinterest fail, but he then gifts it to Jabba the Hutt. He loves the Force Choke. Vader is really into the Force Choke maneuver. He's seen throughout the films choking anyone who makes a mistake. The most extra Force Choke happens in Empire, when he kills Admiral Ozzel for coming out of warp too quickly. Plus, he basically kills Ozzel over a FaceTime with other people watching. He uses the Force to feed Padme. Even before he's Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker is one extra Jedi. In an attempt to wine and dine Padme on their trip to Varakino, Anakin uses the Force to take a slice of Shayura and stick it in Padme's mouth. You get that sense that even Anakin knows how extra he's being, because he says if Master Obi went caught me doing this, he'd be very grumpy. He lives on the planet where he lost his limbs. Vader has a flair for the dramatic, obviously, given his solid black samurai robot suit, but the fact that he lives on the planet where he lost his limbs is drama on top of drama. Mustafar, where he had his showdown with Obi Wan, is a fiery lava planet that's nearly uninhabitable. The fact that Vader survives there just so he can get mad every time he wakes up is like moving next door to your ex just to remind yourself you used to be in a stable relationship. He reveals Luke's lineage at the worst time. There's no right way to tell someone you're their real father after years of mystery, but there's definitely a wrong way. While dueling with Luke on Cloud City, Vader tells the young man that he, the guy who just cut off Luke's hand, rather than deal with the situation, Luke chooses to fall down an air vent. Luke is apparently as extra as his dad. He makes his cake below with no wind. After his big entrance at the end of Rogue One, Vader obliterates just about every member of the Rebel Alliance he comes in contact with, but one ship manages to make it out of the loading dock. As Vader stands in the dock, which opens out into space, his cape blows. 
without wind in space. This means he's using the force to manipulate his own cape all for the drama. He's got jokes. Vader drops plenty of one-liners throughout the original trilogy. It feels like George Lucas was watching the Sean Connery Seven movies when he was scripting dialogue. One of the most popular zingers comes after he force chokes Captain Nido. After crushing the bad talking soldier's windpipe, Vader says, apology accepted, Captain Nido. That's nothing to the pun Vader drops in Rogue One. In his first scene, Director Krennic gets force choked after attempting to usurp another officer's plans. Vader tells him, be careful not to choke on your aspirations, Director. He uses the force to ride on top of a TIE fighter. If there's one thing Vader loves, it's an entrance. At no time in the original series, Rogue One, or even the animated show Star Wars Rebels does, he walk into a room without a bit of flair. In the Star Wars Rebels episode Twilight of the Apprentice, Park Roman II, Vader arrives on Malacha riding on top of a TIE fighter. That means Vader had to fly to Malacha from wherever he was, find Ezra and Ahsoka, get out of the TIE fighter without anyone noticing him, get on top of the TIE fighter, and then lower himself down without falling off. He sets a fancy table for Han and Leia. When Lando reveals he sold out Han and Leia in order to keep Cloud City safe from the Empire, he leads his captives to a room with Vader and a fully set table. What's happening here? Did Vader have a full meal before enacting his plan? Does he think they are going to sit down and eat dinner like a family, or is he just tacky? The Engineer's Rockstar Entrances The final scene in Rogue One puts a very fun button on a downer movie. The Rebels get the information on the Death Star, and they start handing it off to people so someone can get it to Leia. That's when Vader uses the Force to cut the lights in the ship so he can freak everybody out when he finally appears. For a moment, the Rebels are engulfed in darkness. All they can hear is an alarm and Vader's breathing apparatus. That's when the Sith Lord switches on his lightsaber, revealing himself in a glow of red light. Hey guys, thank you so much for the support and like and comment down below and also thank you so much for watching and I look forward to see you in the next video then. Take care. Bye. Bye.